Hey Jeff, this is Blair and we're back at the ITMA headquarters studio here where Rocco and I make all the videos. I had an epiphany last night, I just wanted to throw this in on passing, or in passing I should say. Okay, so just before we get into the actual framework for the module here, um, I want to just point out that we also have purchased Jeff and John and Daniel if you're listening, the 10weekacademy.com, www.the10weekacademy.com, uh, because we've got 10 in the, the number 10 in the logo already, so to speak, Rocco came up with yesterday, I thought we'd just stick there with the number 10, and that way we open up the door to anything 10. So if you think that we can do anything to with anyone, um, serve them up a bunch of knowledge in 10 weeks or 20 hours of training for $1,000. Just opens up a huge floodgate of opportunity for us. And all we have to do is put the 10 week in front of it or 10 week, like 10 week rock star, 10 week basket weaving, whatever. Here we go into the framework very quickly. 40 minute blocks of time times three, so three 40 minute lessons broken into sub-lesson plans. So the three 40-minute blocks will each have three 13-minute videos. And the topics that we're going to cover are right out of the curriculum that I taught for seven or eight years. I've had probably 500 students go through this program from eight years old to 58 years old. It really doesn't matter. All types of different music acoustic, electric, bass, songwriting. I used to record and help songwrite with the kids and a lot of them have gone on to greatness. Um, it's really fun to watch that transformation. Just like you are about to go on to rock stardom yourself. So we'll have a quick welcome. This is something that we would sit down as a general rule and welcome all of the online students. Electric versus acoustic. We'll have a discussion on the subtle differences between the oxymorons of playing very lightly while palm muting your electric guitar and letting the amplifiers do the work, or playing the acoustic and playing a little bit heavier but still playing in tune. So there's a lot of subtleties just in that opening session. Pick holding. I'll be drawing on the picks in the studio with you and whoever stops by to join us. And the learners at home can take a Sharpie and follow along with us, but holding that pick is a key element to everything we're about to embark on. And unlike a lot of conservatory teachers and music studios, we'll be jumping right into the good stuff. There won't be much delay in getting into the good stuff. So the learners back there in their online programs in the first 30 days, if we do the 30 day no questions asked guarantee, they're going to be rocking out in the second week. So bar none, this will be a very low return uh, on this particular program. So pick holding, tuning conventional as we move into the second video series, pick hold, uh, tuning conventionally, meet your strings, fingers and posture. Believe it or not, I got the students to close their eyes and actually feel the tension of the strings. A properly tuned E string, you know, the learners should be able to, when they finish this program, be able to change the strings on their guitar by feel, believe it or not, aside from pitch, but by the tension as they move their finger up and under the strings. Now, I played with some incredibly good musicians and shared the stage with them and watched them as they sing a song. And while I'm playing a lead solo, they're changing their string live on stage just by the feel of it. A quick tune, a quick stretch, back to singing the third verse. It's incredible. What's even more incredible is when someone's singing a song that they've written and changing a string on the fly while all that's going on. We'll get into the metronome and the beats and the up uh, strums and the down strums, a key element in copying your favorite artist or even in terms of writing your own song. Meet your TU2. Uh, 440 hertz. We'll talk a little bit about the Bose tuner. Um, it's probably one of the most frequently used tuners I've seen on stage across America. 
So we'll use that as an example, as a disclaimer, we're not here to promote or sell any products. We'll make that statement as we go through. 440 hertz, why standard tuning is used in the studio and why it's not used from time to time, whether in the studio or live. And why does Jimi Hendrix, when you go to copy one of Jimi Hendrix's songs, why is it not in any standard tuning? It's just a little off center, so to speak, because he came in the studio, no fancy tuners, he just felt it, tuned each string harmonically probably, and went on with it. Basic tab, we'll cover the tablature that we talked about a little bit uh, earlier, and talk about how we get those E chords and G chords into tablature, and then later on we'll discuss lead soloing and how we write out lead solo tablature so that we can learn a song with the uh, Chop Shop or any of the devices, put the headphones on and learn a lead solo and then actually capture that on paper by use of tab. Now the learners don't have to lear know how to read music, they don't have to know how to write music, it's a very simple process for guitar players, and I'm sure that you're quite familiar with that, Jeff. We'll do hammers and pulls, and, and notice that we're into the fourth session here, the fourth week, and we're already talking about leads, hammers and, uh, hammers and pulls, and, and doing a little bit of lead work along the way. Crawls, we'll start to work on that finger dexterity. As we move into week five, we're actually going to pull the bass out, and we're going to teach the learners the basics of the bass guitar so that when they start writing their own jingles or songs or even trying to copy a song from someone else, they have a fine appreciation for how the song is written by listening to the bass line, that foundation with the drums, the kick drum, the snare drum, and the bass line and the interaction with counter melodies. And you, know, you think about Paul McCartney, you think about Sheryl Crow, most all of their songs were written on the bass guitar, so key element in becoming a rock star is having that appreciation for the bass. And you know, you think about me driving around with the RV, I have a bass, an acoustic guitar, and an electric guitar hanging in the RV, ready to go on to GarageBand the moment a uh, riff hits my brain, I can get it out into the studio and record that. And maybe another day or two will go by and I'll actually hear the guitar part, the counter melody to the bass line. We'll tab out the riffs, again the tablature. We'll come up with a couple of simple uh, leads or simple riffs. You think Joe Perry, I mean every Aerosmith song started with a riff. And we'll actually write those out in tablature. So if you think of a really cool riff, you can record it with your iPhone for listening to later, but if you forget where you played it and you're frustrated because you can't find where you played it, you could always make yourself a sheet with a little tablature where we could write that out. So moving down into the um, session five or week five, so we'll also learn basic chording, the G chord, the C chord, the D chord, the E minor, the A chord. I know it sounds so fundamental, but guess what, Jeff? So many people out there frustrated with playing guitar are playing G chords and C chords like they were taught at the Conservatory of Music. And that's not how rock guitar is played. So the basic chording is fundamental as that may sound. We'll teach, in, even in the launch videos, how to put the G chord into position and the C chord so you can play like Green Day or like any of your favorite artists and sound like them. Because if you're playing what you see in an old-fashioned guitar chording book from um, you know, way back, uh, how to learn how to play guitar, and the C chord, the way we were taught, is not the way that rock, guitars, rock guitarists play that C chord. So, once you learn how to do tablature, the great news is that even for people that can't read music, sheet music, or write sheet music, we can actually use tablature to write all, all of our lead solos. And as part of the bonus curriculum, I didn't even write this on here, we'll talk about the C tech and how to slow down lead solos so we could learn them. So let's say uh, that we go and learn the solo for Sweet Child of Mine. Well, I would learn it by slowing it down, trying to find those notes on my guitar through the fundamentals and theory that we learned here, and then I would write the entire solo out in tablature. Now that might be advanced, it might be the 10-week rock star 
like Rocco said, second level, level one, level two, level three. Yeah. We can go as far as we want with this, Jeff. There's no limit to the uh, bound, boundless opportunities. <laughs> but, but in any case, as we go through the tablature and we understand how to write this, then we can actually start to get the learners to write out the new tunings and the new chords that we're going to show them on tablature in their own notes back at the uh, particular location they're at. We also have the benefit of posting PDFs into the Kajabi platform so they can download those as well. We're going to cover the D over F sharp, the A over the C sharp, the E over the G sharp. These are basically chords with a B uh, bass line that goes along with it. We'll talk about harmonic tuning. This is the next best thing to having a chromatic tuner on stage. We'll talk about natural harmonics. Uh, you think about the introduction to uh, Panama with Van Halen. Alternate tunings. Why do artists do alternate tunings? Um, think about bands that, um, for example, the Rolling Stones. Did you know that Keith Richards, he used to drink so much and play out of tune and get a little weird on stage, so they made him start playing with five strings only. So he only ever has, for the most part, five strings on his guitar with the top E string, the low E missing. So then he started doing five strings only with these alternate tunings. And a lot of the songs that we hear by the Rolling Stones, you think about their catalog of music, why is it so interesting? Because a lot of times Keith came up with some really weird and innovative chord patterns based on his alternate tunings. We'll go over palm muting in detail, how to get that chugging sound on your guitar. We'll discuss live tunings. Why do bands tune down a half a step on stage? Why was the Jimi Hendrix song in a tuning or in a pitch that you can't find on the chromatic tuner? You know, did he just come in the studio um, and tune to whatever he felt like that day and just went with it, whatever felt good? Drop D tunings. D to D tunings, C sharp to C sharp tunings. We'll learn how the heaviest of heavy bands get that low grungy sound. Now, even in the nice acoustic sounds, uh, like Three Libras, for example, and uh, we'll get the learners to download that and play along with it. We'll show them the technique how to do that on their acoustic guitar. The C sharp to C sharp tuning can be rather amazing. In fact, the Three Libras song in the studio when they were writing it and recording it was actually called C sharp because that was the tuning that they were in. We'll do a little baritone guitar work a la Stevie Earle. Uh, we'll kind of feel that bottom end of that B to B tuning with the baritone guitar. We'll do open G. Now again, these are advanced techniques that most guitar teachers, that you're not going to, I don't even know Rocco that you can go on YouTube and and get someone to show you how to play C-sharp to C-sharp. So these are techniques that throw this into the 997 grouping of guitar instruction. You're never going to get this comprehensive learning in anything that's out there available. Open G tuning, you're going to play a little bit of slide work and the bonus, you're going to want to be in open G tuning. And if you like ZZ Top, we'll use a couple of those songs as examples and maybe George Thurgood move it on over. Big dogs coming in. Octave intros, we'll discuss how the octave pattern works. If you watch the Driving America for Better Roads uh, theme song with Irene and I, that little lead solo when I'm standing on top of the Airstream is all octave strums. In new music today, it's a very popular way to add a third and fourth dimension to the music simply by using two notes on the guitar, two octaves with everything else in between muted. Well, a very difficult technique to employ but once you've got it, there's nothing like it. Octave strums. We'll talk about getting intimate with the A chord. Now I know that sounds sexy. It's really important for us to know all the different configurations of every single chord that we have at our disposal. In this case, I'll use the A chord as an example and show 10 different ways to play it. And you pick your favorite three. We'll talk about suspended chords and passing tones. So when you pick up an acoustic guitar on the beach, Jeff, you'll be able to really woo your friends by the dexterity with your fingers and how you can move between a C chord, a G chord, a D chord and put some very nice music together. Now, if that wasn't enough, we've got all the bonus videos. So, Rock and I were thinking along the way we could post these up in Kajabi in the bonus section and you know, we could say that you know, Blair used to teach this stuff on one-on-one -on -one training and 
He'd make thousands of dollars doing it, and he seldom shares this knowledge. We could do the Frank Kern reluctant hero and say, you know, I really had to convince Blair to go a little bit deeper to come up with these bonus videos. But we're going to get into GarageBand. And Rock and I could sit down and do, and, and this wouldn't involve you, Jeff, um, but we could sit down and do an entire one hour or two hour session just with ScreenFlow, talking about writing a song together. Or conversely, we could do this out at the ranch in Durango, just the same, where you and I could go into GarageBand together and write a song, and you play a part and record it. Or you could do the whole thing. You could take all your knowledge from here and write a song. And, you know, Daniel, if you're welcome to jump in, too, and learn along with us, okay? You don't yeah, have... and this is actually something that we use for um, our product that we have right now. We actually are creating our own songs as of right now. You know, different mixes between rock or uh, some little you know, uh, funky beats, whatever it is you're looking for kind of thing. GarageBand is an awesome program. Yeah, good point, Rocco. And, of course, all the equipment, much like you did, Daniel, in the studio with the video and lighting, we could do the same with the GarageBand. We'll show them, what interface do I buy? What pedals do I use? How do I get to sound like Slash with my iPad or my iPhone? Then some more bonus videos. We'll talk about string changes and taking care of your guitars intonation, how to set up a guitar so it stays in tune and sounds in tune. It's not enough that we use a tuner, we actually have to go in with the bridge and set the bridge and the action up and the intonation has to be just right, especially if we're recording in the studio. You know, Jeff Tomei lives right around the corner from us and he's a famous producer. In fact, he's done Smashing Pumpkins and Jerry Canfield, a bunch of really famous artists. And he said to me one day, you know, Blair, these world-class recording uh, contracts are coming to me and I'm recording 20 year olds that come in here they don't even know how to play in tune he said he has to fix everything in Pro Tools so very few good musicians out there anymore they can write a good song don't get me wrong but they probably wouldn't know the first thing about intonation that's one of the most important things to know before you go recording your music we'll go through the EAB blues we'll talk about slide guitar we'll actually demonstrate Jeff you'll be playing slide guitar in open G We'll talk about putting your capo on. A lot of times we want to play with a capo because, uh, for example, when Holly came into the studio, I said, let's try this Johnny Cash song in E. If she just said to me, well, Blair, that's a little bit too low for me, I could have very easily put a capo on at the second fret and said, how's this, Holly? I mean, I've been live on stage before when some woman is trying to sing Patsy Cline and we'll start a song off in E and she'll say, that's a little bit too low for me and we'll have to instantly transpose the song into F sharp. You got to be able to think on the fly and play by ear in this business, and that's going to be a big part of the bonus section. So finger picking, muting, hybrid picking, that's where we use a combination of the pick and our fingers. So we're actually holding the pick and we're also plucking along with our fingertips on another string. Cliches, we'll go over the top ten cliches where we actually bend the strings up like Chuck Berry and Bennett. You know, he listened to a saxophone player and said, why can't I do that on my guitar? He learned how to bend the strings and the rest is history. That's why we're here today talking to you about the 10-week Rockstar program. Harmo harmony leads, think about Thin Lizzy. Uh, the boys are back in town. What a wonderful harmony lead. We'll use that as an example. We'll get the learners to download it on iTunes and you and I will sit down in the bonus session and play the lead to the boys are back in town together. I know you're gonna be impressed with that. We'll talk about boxes. That's where we play leads in when we improvise. And finally, we'll talk about harmonic pinches or squeals, just like ZZ Top. And if that's not enough, I know Jeff will come up with a crushing offer along the way. So I hope that you take a little time, Jeff, to think about this. Um, Rocco and I have plenty of time. I mean, we're finishing up one project here with an Academy, and uh, we do have Driving America for Better Roads to take care of as well uh, in congruency with this. But anytime you're ready to get started, we're more than happy to come out there in the RV, hang out with you for a couple of weeks. We won't bother you. We will respect your privacy. I understand your lifestyle. We're not here to change anything. Uh, just, you know, say we're going to film from 9 to 11. We'll come in, we'll sit down, we'll knock it out. Everything we do over here at ITMA with Rock and I is one take. So looking forward to hearing back from you guys. John, Jeff, Daniel, have a great week. And by the way, I will be coming out to Denver next week. That's the 20th through the 25th, I think. So if I need to hang around there and meet you guys on the way back for a 
four hours or something uh, in Durango, just call me, okay, or email me. Thanks, guys.